This meeting is being recorded. Sorry, Madam Chair, the floor is yours. All right, good, good evening. Uh, uh, this is Sherry Dong. I don't know if, how, if I should be introducing myself, but uh, thank you, thank you. Uh, good evening, the City of Boston Zoning Board of Appeal hearing for November 17th, 2022 is now in session. Uh, this hearing is being conducted in accordance with the applicable provisions of the uh, open meeting law, including the updated provisions enacted by the legislature regarding virtual hearings. The new law allows the board to continue its practice of holding virtual hearings through March 2023. This hearing of the board is being held remotely via the Zoom webinar event platform. This hearing is also being recorded. In order to in order to ensure this hearing of the board is open to the public, uh, members of the public may access this hearing through telephone and video conferencing. This information for connecting to this hearing is listed on today's hearing agenda, which is posted on the public notices page of the city's website, boston.gov. Members of the public will enter the virtual hearing as attendees, which means you will not see yourself on the screen and you will be muted throughout unless administratively unmuted when asked to com comment. Board members, applicants, and their attorneys or representatives will participate in the hearing as panelists and they will appear alongside the presentation materials when speaking. Panelists are strongly encouraged to keep video on while presenting to the board. As with our in-person meetings, Comments in support will be followed by comments in opposition. The order of comments is as follows. Elected officials, representatives of elected officials, and members of the public. The chair may limit the number of people called upon to offer comment and the time for commenting as time constraint requires. For that reason, the board prefers to hear from members of the public who are most impacted by a project. That is those individuals who live closest to the project. If you wish to comment on an appeal, please click the raised hand button along the bottom of your screen in the Zoom webinar platform. Click it again and your hand should go down. When the host sees your hand, you will receive a request to unmute yourself. Select yes and you should be able to talk. If you are connected to the hearing by telephone, please press star nine to raise and lower your hand you must press star six to unmute yourself after you receive the request from the host. Those called upon uh, to comment will be asked to state their name and address first and then can provide their comment. In the interest of time and to ensure that you have enough time to do so, please raise your hand as soon as Mr. Fortune reads the address into the record before the relevant address is called or the meeting host will not know to call on you at the appropriate time. Uh, these instructions will be repeated throughout the hearing. Uh, now I will take a uh, roll call uh, and Mr. Mr. Fortune will call on the list. All right, thank, Mr. You. thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. I'm here. All right, thank you. And H Hansie? Present, Madam Chair. <laughs> thank you. Rookie great, chair. <laughs> great job, Madam Chair. Great job. We're here for you. We'll support you 100% of the way. All uh, right. I'm going to call uh, the first order is the are there any deferrals or withdrawals for the five o'clock cases? If you can give me the address first, please. Hi, Eileen Rosa for 60 Chesterfield. Okay, thank you, ma'am. So you're, re you're deferring your 60 Chesterfield Street project? Correct. Yeah, you, you need a. I need it for a later date. Uh, yeah, so hold on two seconds. Let me call it into the record, and then you uh -huh. can explain. Sure. Call, calling DOA one three six eight five three two sixty Chesterfield Street. Name and address for the record, please. Yep, Eileen Rosta from Rosa Design and Construction. Uh, we're located two eighty six Blue Hill Avenue in Milton. All right. Do I have a motion to defer? I'll give you a motion to defer. I'll second that motion. Thank you. All right. I don't, Mark? Yes. All right. Hansi? Yes. Thank you. And I too say yes. So motion carries. <laughs> and ma'am, you'll have a date of January 19th at 5 p.m. in 2023. Does that give you enough time? Excellent. Yes. Thank you. Very good. Thank you. All right. Thank you. Bye bye. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the five o'clock cases? 
Yes, 510 East 8th Street, please. Thank you, sir. Hold on two seconds. Call in case BOA 1335230510 East 8th Street. Name and address for the record, please. Thank you, Attorney John Barry, representing John Drago. My law office is located at 1156 Dorchester at Boston Mass 02125. We are respectfully requesting a deferral. There was an issue with the revision that was sent in, and it has not been um, approved by the examiner and sent along to the board at this time. Thank we'll you, Mr. Barry. We'll make a motion for deferral. I'd like to put forward a motion to defer. I'll second that motion. All right. Thank you, Mr. Fortune. Yes. Ms. Better Bronza, Braza. Yes. Uh, and the chair also says yes, so motion carries. And you'll also have the date of January 19th at 5 p.m. Thank you, members of the board. Have a nice night. You too. Are there any other deferrals or withdrawals for the five o'clock cases? Hearing none, I'll call the first case. Calling BOA 137 1369 14 Cook Street. This is to confirm Auckland as a single family residence and add a two story kitchen office addition, renovation to the basement and first floor of an existing home. Scope includes removing the existing back addition and exterior stairs. The violations, Article 62, Section 8, the rear yard is insufficient. Name and address for the record, please. Is the applicant on? Yes, yeah. we're on. Lily Orlin and Dewey Nichols, their architect. Perfect. Um, Can you walk us I'm, through? I'm the architect. So I my address is 23 Millmont Street in Boston, 02119. So to walk it through, um, this this addition that we're proposing is is actually the replacement of an existing structure that um, does not have a legal fire separation with the adjacent um, home. Um, it is. It also has extremely low ceiling heights that actually don't meet code as well. Um, the second floor has a ceiling height of six foot five. Um, in in this design, we're removing the very back of the um, existing structure, giving an additional seven feet that will not be reconstructed. Um, and and then the the main block of the building is is going to be re reconstructed with a firewall and with um, you know appropriate ceiling heights that are you know kind of matching the the main house. So it also is giving a lot of attention to um, daylighting, noting that that's kind of uh, a green sort of architecture um, and gives more connection to the outdoor space for the for the owner. And that's why we would like to um, be able to rebuild this block of the house. Thank you, Ms. Better Bronza. Have you read the plans? Yes, Madam Don, Madam Chair, and the drawings are adequate. Thank you, Mr. Fortune. Any any com questions or? No, I'm good, Madam Chair. Uh, we will. We can take testimony from the public. Is there anyone, uh, any public officials who wish to speak in favor? Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. The applicant circulated flyers to the abutters in the neighborhood. No concerns were expressed at our office. So at this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Thank you. Madam Chair, I have no raised hands at the moment. Thank you. Okay. Uh, uh, would uh, someone like to make a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the scale of the rear yard addition. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Okay, Mr. Fortune. Yes. Ms. Better Barraza. Yes. Uh, Chair also says yes, motion carries. Thank you. Calling the next case, calling DOA 130-7654-33 Russell Street. This is a conversion of a single family into a two family residence. It's an interior renovation. Exterior changes will be limited to the egress stair and roof deck. The existing rear deck will be rebuilt. The violations, Article 62, Section 8, usable open space is insufficient. Article 62, Section 62 25, roof and deck access. Article 62, Section 62 8, rear yard is insufficient. And Article 62, Section 7, a change of architecture from a single to a two-family. Name and address for the record, please. 
Hello, my name is Timothy Sheehan. I live at Nine Wall Street. I'm in the architect for the pro project, representing the clients. Um, yeah, this is this is right behind my house, actually. <laughs> but um, this is a single family wood frame, three story residence. Um, I am Mike and Catherine, uh, um, you know, son and, 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 and mother. And essentially, they're living in the house now as a two family, but it's not obviously zoned that way or built that way. So what we would like to do is change, you know, renovate the building needs to be renovated anyway. So renovate the building and create a two family residence. Um, would like to add a roof deck for Mike on the third floor and he would have a one bedroom, 575 square foot, you know, one bedroom apartment. And his mom, Captain, would have the bottom two floors and should have a two bedroom, uh, actually three bath, two bedroom unit. Um, currently now there's a deck. If you look at the at A3, the building's in the side of a hill. So, you know, the second floor essentially is the first floor, you know, it has a walk straight out to grade. So what we'll do is put a deck, build a new deck for Captain for his mom at the yard level. Then there's an existing deck up on that third floor, which would rebuild and, and actually put a spiral staircase on for Mike's second egress. And then the roof deck would be something, you know, is causing the, the roof deck is actually causing the roof restriction violation. So um, that's what we'd like to do. The bottom unit would be 863 square feet. And the new, you know, Mike's unit upstairs, the single floor would be 575 square feet. So just to clarify, other than the, the deck extensions, the other work is interior? It's all interior, yes. How are the plans, Ms. Barraza? Madam Chair, the plans are adequate. Any other questions or, or comments from the board? I'll take uh, public testimony. Is there are there any public officials first to speak in support or opposition? Uh, yes. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. Uh, Madam Chair, our office has seen a lot of personal turnover lately, so we don't have much information on this proposal. At this time, though, we are unaware of any neighborhood concerns. With that, we defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Yeah, if I could help, that no one showed up for the neighborhood meeting. It was it was a prior person who was you know, we have a new person now in town, a new representative, but it, it was it was it was not attended. You know when it happened. And uh, Madam Chair, you have no raised hands. No raised hands. Okay. May I entertain a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval with BPDA design review, paying special attention to the screening of the proposed roof deck. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Chair also says yes. Motion carries. Thank you, everybody. <clears throat> Good night. You too. Thanks, calling, the next, calling the next case, calling BOA 135 943 822 Hanover Avenue. This is a renovation of a single family townhouse. Occupants will remain a single family. The, the new stair and head house, an additional two floors over the lower portion of the existing building. The violation of Article 54, Section 10, the rear yard is insufficient, and Article 54, Section 18, roof structure restriction. Name and address for the record, please. This is Park McDowell. I'm the architect. I live at 7 Unity Street, number 9 in the North End. I'm a, I'm a neighbor and friend of the owner. Our children are about the same age. So Stephen and Jenny here are looking to do a renovation to their primary residence, or will be their primary residence after the renovation. It includes a two-story addition over an existing one-story portion of the building. Note that the entire project will remain under the allowable building height of 55 feet. Um, in total, the three-story three structure is going to be 31 feet, three inches above grade to the roof parapet. And then the proposal also calls, calls for a stair headhouse set back from the street facing parapet. And the top of that headhouse will be 40 feet above the street. These features are consistent with the neighborhood character and the scale. There are larger buildings immediately adjacent uh, to the rear at Four Powers Court and uh, across the street at 35 North Street. To the second point, that about the rear yard being insufficient. So you see here on the screen the existing structure. If you go to the next slide, it will be the, the proposed new structure. This shows the increased height from uh, the, the single story lower section of the building to have that be three stories like the other and also some updates to the exterior fenestration. Next slide. Here you see the plans. 
And on the next slide, the stairway continues all the way to the roof. In a highlighted uh, on this slide, you see the location of the project. I indicated the taller building to the rear at Four Powers Court, and then the much taller building across the street at 35 North Street. This just gives you an idea about the scale of the neighborhood. Next slide. I also wanna to speak to the other violation. Uh, that's about the rear yard being insufficient due to the narrow depth of the site. The existing building is right on the lot line. It's not set back from the rear lot line specifically. And that required 12 foot setback is not feasible due to the shape of the property. Um, the proposed renovation maintains the current building footprint. So I hope that you will agree with me um, that these requests for zoning relief are reasonable. We've done our community process guided by Sierra. We've got the approval of both New Ra and New Nick, and we've received no complaints or uh, concerns about the project um, from any parties. Thank you. Uh, Ms. Bedbaraza, have you reviewed the plans? Madam Chair, I have reviewed the plans and I do have a couple of questions. Please. Um, so I believe this isn't a GCOD and- It is um, not in a, it's not in a GCOD overlay. Um, it's not in a GCOD overlay, yeah. okay. Um, yeah. In terms, can you describe the existing head house in regards to dimensions and then your new replacement? Sure, the existing head house is um, basically a hatch, an attic hatch to crawl up. It has a kind of ship's ladder to the top. We're proposing a code compliant stair, which includes a code compliant head house set back from the street. Um, you can see in the in the maybe the elevations would be helpful to understand those two geometrically. Okay, so you're proposing a, a full head house, but the existing is just a hatch. Am I understanding that correctly? Uh, you have to duck your head to get out. It's not quite a hatch, um, okay. but it is not a full height space. It's up a ship's ladder. And okay. You can see that actually, if you go up one more slide, um, you'll see the existing. You know, it's it's that shape behind the fence. So it and is a head house, which projects proud of the building. And you're proposing front balconies. How are they uh, cantilevered? How are they attached? The front, the front balconies? Yes. Yes, that's connected to the building structure. Um, basically, that's the way that the joists are running. So those are extensions of the primary structural joists coming out. Okay. I have no further questions. Thank you. Uh, yeah, my, my, I mean, the, I don't know if this is typically, to me, this seems like a large Durscope project that I think it needs full board. Um, I don't know if that's something that I can recommend. Yeah, maybe Tom's online. I can't recall if there's, to, if there's needs to be a motion to propose that. Hi, Andy, this is Tom. Uh, Hi. If, if you think that um, there, if it, there's a motion to defer to the full board for that. Yeah. That would be December sixth. I think would be our next one. Um, we could yep. certainly do that if you if you guys all agree that that's the right the right choice. Okay, I, uh, I would I would agree with you, Hansi, on this. Yeah, because this is the, this is not a very this is not a small single family renovation. <laughs> right. Okay, <laughs> I, well, think it, case, I think it needs a little bit much more of a larger kind of board to provide some feedback. Okay, in that case, let's take a motion. I like to make a motion of defer so that it can reach the full board. Yeah, I'll second that motion. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Chair says yes, motion carries. And that will be December 6th at 11.30. Will that also be a virtual meeting like this? That's correct. Yes. Yeah, you just Wonderful. have the full Thank board. Mm -hmm. Perfect. Calling the next case, calling DOA 1310472702 East 5th Street. This is to replace the existing roof deck with a new roof deck. The violation is Article 9, Section 1, reconstruction extension of a non conforming building, the roof deck, Article 68, Section 8, side yard, side yard for the roof deck, and Article 68, Section 8, the rear yard for the roof deck. Name and address for the record, please. Uh, my name is Michael Gordon at 702 East 5th Street. Are you prepared to present? Yes, so I'm the owner, um, occupant, and what we're proposing here is an update to the existing roof deck. Uh, currently, there is no decking um, on, the, on the 
roof of the ceiling, I mean, of the house, and we're proposing to put new railings and new decking down. Um, there is a slight modification to the area um, as we're hoping to move the air conditioner units out um, just to the left there. If you see there in the proposed uh, roof deck there, the equipment area would be moved outside of the existing roof deck. Have you reviewed the plans, Ms. Bedebraza? Madam Chair, I have, and I have no questions. They're adequate. Okay. Uh, may I hear a testimony in support? We're up. Good, good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for 702 East Fifth Street on August 23rd. There was no opposition at the abutters meeting or when they presented at the City Point Neighborhood Association meeting on September 13th. At this point, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you so much. Thank you, Anna. Good, good evening, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support based on feedback from neighbors and the City Point Neighborhood Association as it is a replacement of the already existing roof deck. Thank you. Thank you, Anna. You Are there any raised other raised yes, hands? The caller, um, 617-840, sent a request to unmute you. Um, once unmuted, can you, okay, go ahead. Yep, can you state your name and address for the record? My, hi, this is Luann O'Connor, president of the City Point Neighborhood Association, and we want to go on record in support of this project. The proponent presented before CPNA and based on the photos that he showed of puddles on the roof and no decking on the roof, uh, we find that in this particular case, we will in fact support the roof deck. Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Sorry, no additional raised hands there. Thanks. Thank you. May I entertain a motion? Madam Chair, I'd like to put forward a motion of approval. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Uh, chair says yes. Motion carries. Thank you very much. Calling the next case, calling VOA 134 3962 690 East 8th Street. This is to install a new curb cut to allow for two cars off street parking. The violations Article 10, Section 1, limitation of off street parking, and Article 68, Section 31, screening and buffering. Name and address for the record, please. Madam Chair, members of the board, Attorney Ryan Spitz with Adams and Maranci, business address of 168 8th Street, South Boston. Uh, with me today is the owner, Mary Walsh. Um, as, as we're here today uh, seeking a conditional use permit to allow for two off street parking spaces um, that will be accessed to the right of the property. Um, we, as we're all aware here that South Boston faces a parking crisis, uh, this proposal here will be adding one space back uh, to the neighborhood by allowing these two off street spots to be in existence. Uh, we're at approximately 18 feet long by seven and a half feet wide. Um, further, uh, there are uh, what I think is uh, well well to be noted is the fact that there are other parking scenarios that are very similar to this in the South Boston neighborhood. Um, I do respectfully understand the board's uh, stance on of allowing front yard parking um, on this street here. About two properties down from the left, uh, further down on Eighth Street, you'll notice that there's an actual garage that the the garage abuts the entire street itself too. Uh, facing the street. And there's a, actually a few other garages and such on, on 8th Street too. So again, um, at this point, I'm going to open it up for any questions or comments. Thank you. You answered my question about front or not. Uh, Ms. Barraza. Madam Chair, I reviewed the drawings and they're adequate. Uh, the only question I have is, did we receive any um, feedback from BTD? Yes, we did, uh, Hansi. Um, so, Madam Chair, I'm going to put uh, Bob D'Amico's comments in for the record regarding 690 East 8th Street. Ward 7 has front yard parking as well as lack of dimensional requirements. Thank you. Thank you, Mark. You're welcome. Any other comments from the board? May I hear testimony in support or opposition? 
Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board. I'm Anna White with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted an abutters meeting for 690 East 8th Street on September 21st, 2022. Uh, 10 abutters attended the meeting. Three direct abutters expressed their support for the proposal. We received one letter uh, from a direct abutter who opposes the proposal because of the curb cut removing street parking. At this time, we'd like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. Good evening, Madam of the Chair, members of the board, Anna Calderon from Council President Flink's office. The councilor would like to go on record in support. The proposal received support from her neighbors due to the proponents through community engagement process. The councilor remains support of the proposal due to, con <clears throat> due to concerns on the safety of our seniors and accessibility to her vehicle and home, especially during winter months with difficult conditions of snow and ice, as well as positive feedback from her neighbors. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you. Uh, Madam Chief, I'm sorry, go ahead, Paul. Yes. Oh, I'm sorry, I thought somebody was trying to get in. Uh, Madam Chair, I do have two letters of opposition. I don't have any letters of support, but I do have two letters of opposition in regards to the um, project, and, in regards to parking for Nightmare. Does it indicate know. what the nature of the opposition is? Parking. Parking is a nightmare. So, okay, thank you. I have no raised hands. Moment. No other raised hands. Uh, may I entertain a motion? Madam Chair, given that we heard from BTD that seven foot seven is does not meet their standard, I'd like to put forward a motion of denial. And I'm going to second that motion. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. I too say yes. Motion carries. On the next case. Calling BOA 133-8514, 6 Thorne Street. Propo this is a proposed driveway curb cut for off street parking for two vehicles. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, limitation of area of accessory uses. Article 50, Section 43, off street uh, loading and parking. Location of the off street parking is not permitted in the front yard. Article 50, Section 43, off street parking and loading, off street parking design and maneuverability. Name and address for the record, please. Hi, Rufus, can you unmute yourself? Yeah. Yes. Hello, can you hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes. Okay, great. Uh, good evening, um, everyone, members of the board. Uh, my name is Rufus Falk. I live at 6 Thwing Street. I am the homeowner. Um, I am proposing uh, off-street parking. Uh, it would accommodate uh, up to two vehicles. Uh, and uh, I, I, the best expression is the, uh, the street is a cul-de-sac street. And, um, you know, I've lived in, in this uh, location for 27 years. And uh, both my wife and I, we work every day and we come home and we cannot park in front of our house. We are parking off street. Most of the houses are single family. And, uh, you know, we're, we're just asking, to come home, park in front of your house. <laughs> it's just, we're, we're uh, living in Rossbury uh, in the Fort Hill area. It's just an increasing amount of uh, non-resident parking on the street, um, mostly single family. And uh, so what we're experiencing is homes that are on the main street that intersects the wing, uh, individuals are parking on the street and, and it's just creating a, a real uh, uh, tough time for us. Um, yes, so um, I'm open to any questions. Are there any uh, residential, uh, you know, uh, permit requirements on your street? No, there are not any, any sort of, uh, um, indications that I, be, I believe it's been proposed uh, several times, but it, it just hasn't happened. And it's only parking on one side of the street, correct? Uh, yes, that's correct. So do you think that parking stickers would alleviate your issue? Uh, I, I don't know that's the case, but uh, I am. it's been over a decade since that's happened. Um, uh, it, it could possibly uh, change the uh, scenario, certainly would reduce the number of cars on the street, uh, especially overnight parking. Um, thank you. Uh, Ms. Betta Barraza? 
Madam Chair, the, the drawings are somewhat adequate. I don't really have a good kind of view of the depth of the driveway. But what I do know is that it's still very narrow. It doesn't really meet BTD's um, driveway dimensions. Yeah. But I would like to hear from I would like to hear from BTD if Mark has it on the record. Yeah, I, I do. I do, Madam Thank Chair you. and Hans, I do have it. Uh, regarding Sixth Wing Street, Ward 11, it does have front yard parking in uh, Bob D'Amico from BTD request denial. Did he talk about the, as uh, Hansi asked about the, the width? No, he didn't go into detail. He just said it's front yard parking. Okay. Um, Madam Chair, I'm sorry, this is ZBA Ambassador. Can I just jump in as, um, as I was the Roxbury liaison, um, I could just speak to the, um, the process of trying to get resident parking on that street. Um, when I was a liaison, it's, yeah, between 2018, it was, it's been really tricky. It's something that they've been advocating for for a few years. Um, it has been really tough. <laughs> a lot of people seem to be in support of um, off street parking on the street based on um, some of the feedback I got as a liaison, uh, but just wanted to throw that in there. It is a small street. Um, and I believe some people do have front street, front, um, parking in the front yard, if I'm not mistaken. Mr. Paul, you can mention it, but yes. I do know for years they've been trying to get the resident parking. It's just been, um, you know, just the process has been tricky. If, I'm, if, my, if I, I may also add to this, uh, BTD paused their resident parking program since two years ago. Yes. And it's yep. been stalled ever since. So they're not, yep. they're not uh, letting any new requests through and they don't know when they're gonna uh, open them up again. Because it's a very small street, clearly. It is, yeah. But and I would like, like to also add, uh, back in 2012, when I applied, just as a reminder, I, I was able to get uh, the permit approved. And uh, for whatever family reasons, I could not proceed with the work. And I'm um, hoping that the you know, requirements haven't changed um, in that time. And, and you know, the, the street is, is just continuous. It's just not getting, getting better. Uh, as, uh, I, 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 I entertained the idea that uh, a permit parking for Roxbury would be um, certainly helpful, but I, uh, my neighbors right next to me, uh, uh, budding or right next to me uh, uh, has no issue. And we've had a conversation and, and uh, yeah, there is enough room. I, I don't drive a huge SUV. I, I drive a very minimal size car and getting in and out of the vehicle is, is wouldn't be an issue for me. Madam Chair, Ms. Barraza, yes. would one car fit adequately, Ms. Barraza? I, you know, minimum is 10 feet, but even if you don't have an option, a foot nine is like better, but eight feet to, to me is still very narrow. Yeah, it's hard to look at the plans and read them, so. Just kind of I, I included some photos. Did you get the photographs that are included? We we, we do. It for, it doesn't meet BTD standards. It's at a minimum, it should be ten feet, or at least eight foot nine. But eight feet is too narrow. There's 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 lots of room. I I, I don't understand. Well, um, so can we, sorry. Can we take public right. testimony? Uh, yes. Good evening, Madam Chair, members of the board, Natalia Benitez with the Mayor's Office of Neighborhood Services. ONS hosted a butters meeting on September uh, 28th, and no opposition was raised. At this time, our office would like to defer judgment to the board. Thank you. I do have a raise. Uh, Alexa, can you state your name? Hi. Right? Yeah, my name is Alexandra Zaccanino. I live at 20 Swing Street. Um, my parents live here as well, um, and I'm not sure if they're on this or not, but we fully support Rufus's um, request for this, whether it's uh, too small, whatever for BTD, there needs to be more parking. If people have space to park a car on their property, that would be ideal. Um, the issue of resident parking stickers has been brought up at, you know, different neighborhood and, you know, abutters meetings and this and that. And it's a very mixed bag. Some people like the idea. Some people don't because that there's no parking for guests. There's a lot of, of um, houses on the street that don't have of private parking areas at all. I don't know what a um, front yard parking is? Uh, do you mean street parking or what is front yard parking? It just means that you can, it's visible from the street, right? 
it's oh, that it's, it's okay. no Mexican the front year par front year parking is that it from your lot line you're parking a vehicle yeah. and there should be some setback of parking from your front house from your front house yeah. so does that look like it's your front yard so if you, if you if you have a, a car in your front yard that's yeah. called front yard parking you, and it's not allowed Okay, oh, but that's not real. That's not the. That's not the concern. That's to, that's oh. one, that's one. Because in in the Google images that I see, I can see that you have depth. So one is your drawings are not adequate enough that shows the whole lot, the depth of it. The other issue is you're literally it's you're parking between two house structures that only have eight feet clearance. No. That is not safe. That's not safe. That is not as incorrect. Um, the the eight foot dimension you're seeing is from my house to my property line, and from my property line to my neighbor's house is another three feet. Can we look at the survey drawings that you've submitted? Uh, how would I present that? Uh, Uh, well, I do not have a, let's see. Uh, the survey drawing by Brewer Construction, um, he, uh, it, within that drawing, you'll, well, yes, this drawing here, here we are. Yes, uh, so what you're looking at, uh, my house is on the right, there's a property line, and you'll see that my neighbor's structure uh, my my uh, engineering right, it, right. It, it, it sits it sits out right and there, there is like a foot six but I do see that there's a line of brick that oh. is that yeah. is uh, kind of on your property line a line of brick that is what, uh, just in some photos it, it doesn't matter I think I think we we've no, I have no, there's, further, I have no further questions. The, the property line that's uh, visible on this drawing uh, between that property line, my property line, and my neighbor's property line, that dimension to his house is uh, clearly over three feet. So there's an offense, there's just surface there. So if I were to pull into the driveway, uh, the, the I could pull fully and the back end of my car would uh, uh i would have enough room to go into the driveway it's clearly um at least in my opinion it, it uh, there's enough room to get into the driveway and the rear of my car would be basically off street parking it would be beyond the corner of my house where it's, it, it's the arrowhead where it says uh, uh parking <laughs> surface <laughs> Thank you, Mr. Falk. Uh, Thank I you. think let's continue yeah. with testimony and then yeah. we'll entertain a motion. Okay, Madam, Chair, of... Madam Chair, I think there was one other person that actually yeah. came in that's here. Yeah, so. yeah. I said if yep. there's any other public testimony, yes. Um, go ahead, Hernan. Hi, um, I am a neighbor uh, and I live on a street that intersects Highland Street, like the Wing Street does. Oh, can, you, and... can you say your name and address for the, for the record? My name is Tracy. My home. My home address is thirty nine Fulda Street. Mm -hmm. Okay, go ahead. Mm -hmm. And um, what we're both experiencing is an overflow of parking from Highland Street, um, with um, rooming houses and short term rentals, and a lot of out of state um, vehicles and also commercial um, commercial vehicles parking on. Um, Fulda and um, also on Valentine Street and then cutting through Fulda Street to get to Highland and um, like the Ring, Street, the Ring Street as well or any of the um, streets up the hill uh, because the parking is that bad. It's um, getting to the point where it is like um, South Boston parking. Um, the, my street has several tow zones um, because it's a very narrow street as well. And I'm in support because it would alleviate any help getting any vehicles off the street. Um, off street parking would help alleviate the problem because it gets worse in the winter because there's nowhere to throw the snow. Um, and um, what happens also is that people 
feel entitled to block um, legal, you know, like I have two driveways and people block the driveway because it's a winter storm and there's nowhere to park. Um, you know, so it's, and I've been there 18 years, but I lived in Roxbury since 1998. Same, and it's just gotten worse. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, may I? Ms. J, you just muted yourself. Sorry. <laughs> I pressed the wrong button. Uh, may I have a motion? Madam Chair, given that BTD's concern was front yard parking and I didn't have enough adequate drawings to understand the depth for the proposal of two cars to park in that mm -hmm. space, I would like to recommend that the applicant does a deferral to give them enough time to do a full plot plan and to yeah. show the two parking spaces. Yeah, uh, Ms. Barraza, I would agree with you on that. Uh, without, with, instead of denying it, I would definitely say they can defer it and correct. try to figure out a better plan. A, ber a better uh, site survey, correct, yeah. with dimensions. I would like to, whoop, so my motion is uh, for the applicant to defer, motion for deferral. I'll second that motion. Thank you. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Chair, chair concurs, motion carries. You'll have a date of January 19th at 5 p.m. January 19th. Yep. And, you and, 5 PM. and please use that time to get a site survey to actually survey your whole property and to dimension the rear I, where the I, two parking spaces would, would be and make sure it's not front yard parking. Yes. Uh, and okay. Thank you. thank you. Appreciate it. Uh, calling the next case, calling VOA 137 1101 to Carlisle Street. This is creating a curb cut and constructing a new driveway for two vehicles. The violations, Article 10, Section 1, the limitation of area of accessory uses, and Article 50, Section 43, Austria parking and loading. Name and address for the record, please. Is the applicant on? Is there a Stephen Stewart? Yes. Or somebody representing two Carlisle? Eric, is, are you representing the applicant here? Actually, they didn't check in with me earlier, so I'm sorry. Okay, we can come back to it. Mm -hmm. We'll do the last, we'll do the next case. Thank you. Calling case BOA 136 8923 37 Blakefield Street. This is an extension of the second floor unit to add, attic, add to the attic as one unit. The violations, Article 65, Section 9, the Floyd ratio is excessive. Name and address for the record, please. Is anybody on for Blakeville Street? Can you raise your hand if you're on? Okay. Is anyone on for Blake 37 Blakeville, please? Madam Chair, I guess if nobody's on for these next two cases, I don't yep. see any raising, anybody raising any hands. I'm going to call them back into the record and then okay. go from there. Thank you. Case BOA 137-1101-2 Carlisle Street. It's now 543. I'm going to make a motion for denial without prejudice. Can I have a second? I like to put, oh, you, that was a motion. I second yeah, it. Motion. <laughs> Thank you. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Barraza? Yes. Chair concurs, motion carries. And for the next case, calling BOA 136 8923 37 Blakeville Street. I'll make a motion for denial. It's now 543. I'll make a, den make a motion for denial without prejudice. I second that. Thank you. Mr. Fortune? Yes. Ms. Better Barraza? Yes. Chair concurs, motion carries. I think that concludes our. Uh, subcommittee hearing. Thank you. Great job, Madam Chair. Yes, great Thank job, you. Madam Chair. <laughs> Sorry for butchering your name. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Good evening. Have a wonderful Bye. evening. Have a, Thank have you. A great, Thanks, Kevin. Good night. Thank you.